Welcome back to the 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show. My name is Wayne Kimmel, Managing Partner of 76 Capital. And as you know, 76 Capital, we run a venture capital company here that invests in passionate and smart and nice entrepreneurs who are launching game-changing technology startups across sports, media, and the entertainment industries. And on this show, our 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show, I get the opportunity to interview top entrepreneurs, athletes, and executives who are shaping and many times changing the overall sports business industry. You can subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and even on our 76 Capital website. Now let's get right to it. My guest today, I'm really excited to bring on a good friend and flip the mic on her because she's so good at asking all of us <laughs> questions all the time. Uh, Contessa, we am so excited to have you on the show. We have Contessa Brewer. Contessa is the lead gaming correspondent at CNBC. And just, Contessa, welcome back to our 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show. Not only the lead correspondent, but the only one. I'm the only gaming correspondent. There's, you know, like everybody else is jealous of me getting to cover casinos because it seems like so much fun. And it is. It is fun. Um, and I'm And I'm lucky. But, you know, just as a side note, Wayne, for everybody else, I also cover insurance. That's right. That's more like my specialty focus. So you're talking to me about gaming, but should you ever want to do a podcast about insurance, I'm prepared for that too. Well, I do actually have some friends <laughs> um, that are investors only in the insurance industry. Actually, one of which, uh, her name is Nicole Cook. Um, that was her maiden name. Um, Nicole Cook G Gunderson actually just spoke to her. She's in Des Moines, Iowa, and she used to work for one of our companies. Um, back in the day, and we just reconnected, and all they do is invest in insurance tech. So you know, uh, the thing that gambling and insurance has in common is risk, right? It's all about how do you price risk, and so there is overlap, but and, but never so much overlap as what I saw last year with the cyber intrusions into Caesars and MGM. And of course, the insurance company for MGM said it right into in their publicly filed documents that even though they, I think that they estimated the cost to be like a hundred million dollars, insurance is going to pick up a large part of that. The same thing for the ransom that Caesars paid, their insurance companies are going to kick in and, and cover a lot of that. So it was a really interesting intersection. And I know like a lot of the companies that you invest in and a lot of the companies that you're interested in, a lot of the companies that I cover because of the technology vehicle behind the idea, the cyber part of that has to come in at a very high priority that, that you you know, when, when you think about what people have to do to sign up for an account on a sports book platform with social security number or bank accounts numbers or you know the ways that you prove your identity and then all of that is in their system there has to be a, a huge emphasis on how to protect that information so anyway i digress what were you going to ask me well look contest the bottom <laughs> line is you're in the middle of everything important at cnbc you know that's the most important thing that we and that's why we're so excited to have you on the show and you know yesterday you know, as we're taping this today on Tuesday, January 30th, yesterday, you were on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange as Flutter, as everyone here in the U.S. knows them for their company, FanDuel, uh, was, was moving over to the New York Stock Exchange. And you were right there in the middle of it with Gronk and the rest of the crew. I mean, what a, what a great day that must have been. I mean, I, you know, I remember the first time that I was ever in the stock exchange when the bell rang. And, you know, the traders are cheering and it's a lot of hoopla. And I was overwhelmed by how exciting that was. Yesterday was like the New York Stock Exchange on steroids, like the marching band that comes through and Gronk up there when the clappers and the, I mean, it, it, it was, it was really crazy. And then Flutter CEO, uh, Peter Jackson, sitting on set with me for Squawk on the Street and talking a little bit about, um, you know, why it's so important to them to list in the United States. And not only that, they're not just making this a secondary listing. Now they're going to take to shareholders a proposal that the U.S. is their primary listing that would make London the secondary listing. And it would actually take, if that happens, it would take Flutter off of the FTSE 100. So it's clear 
the U.S. is their primary market. It's already their biggest market for revenue and for growth and likely soon will be the biggest market for profits as well. So you can see why that happens. I, it was interesting. I was watching stocks yesterday and I saw Flutter went up maybe like a quarter percentage point and and DraftKings went up more than 3% at the end of at the close of the day. So whatever challenge you know, in on day one, whatever challenge Flutter might be in terms of earned media and the capital that gets invested in sports betting here, um, it's clear that that DraftKings has first, first mover status. You know, it's fascinating what's happened over the last several years. I mean, the last time you were on the show, you talked about how you started, you, you moved over to CNBC from MSNBC, and you started, you know, you were in charge of covering casinos. And at the time you mentioned Las Vegas Sands, Wynn, Caesars, and MGM. And that was it. Like, that's all you needed to kind of focus on. That was the casino industry. Sports betting really wasn't a thing yet, you know, on the regulated side. And now you've got FanDuel, you have DraftKings, you have Disney, right? Another one to watch because of ESPN bet. Mm -hmm. I mean, your job has just expanded and grown so much. Talk about this, this, this growth. I mean, it's so exciting to be at the center of an industry when, I mean, I think my closest comparison has got to be the gold rush of the West, you know, in the 1800s, that there's this mad, mad dash to stake a claim and you have no idea whether that claim is going to pay off, whether you can actually turn a profit from this little area that you've blocked out. But then the goal is, if you find gold, you want to grab all the land around you so that you come out with the most profits. And that's what we're seeing. I, I really think that part of the reason why FanDuel and DraftKings are the juggernauts in sports betting five years in is because they came to the table with their daily fantasy players who knew the sport, knew how to um, operate the system. In other words, even though they weren't betting real money, they were betting. They were betting on how things would turn out. And so those those players, when they switched to sports betting, already knew how, how the system worked. And now you have, you know, traditional casinos like MGM. And I thought Jim Murren, who was the head of MGM at the time, was being forward thinking. He had already um, anticipated that the Supreme Court decision would go this way. Bet MGM was ready to roll out in New Jersey on day one. Whereas the former CEO of Caesars told me in the lead up to the Supreme Court decision, oh no, uh, I'm paraphrasing. He said, I, we don't even know if the Supreme Court decision is going to go that way. I'm not going to worry about that until it happens. And I thought at the time, I mean, it was notable at the time, really, you're not preparing a contingency for sports betting. So when Tom Reed came in, you know, and then they acquired William Hill and then they've relaunched the sports book. He was kind of doing everything from scratch. And there's a there's a catch up play that has to be made. But but I asked Jeffrey's analyst, David Katz, on last call last night, I said, does it matter if you can turn a profit in your sports book, even though you have less than 10 percent market share nationally, if you're profitable? What does, it, what does market share matter? And he's like, you know, that's a really good point. Because I do think that there's a piece of the pie that is lucrative for lots of businesses, even if they're not one of the two biggest players. Well, it's a really interesting point. I mean, it's also this, this thing where you have Caesars and MGM who are you know, they they have the physical presence, right? They have this physical presence. Now they're playing in the digital world. There's this convergence that's occurring. And you would think, right, that they would have this opportunity to really leverage their physical, the physical property and real estate they have, the types of rewards programs and things that they can offer to their players. Um, but at the same time, as you said, they're not one and two. They're right there. But the what, what's the what the future could hold for what and what they could do is really interesting. I think when they start to put and and they know the their member system, their player, you know, Caesar's total rewards or whatever whatever it is, they have now included the sports book 
into that world, when they start using that to its full potential, that's for that's formidable competition. MGM, and in fact, I yesterday when I brought this up in the commercial break, one of my um, colleagues said, you know, it's so funny because I have DraftKings and Caesars on my phone. But he goes, I really bet on Caesars because of the points. I'm accruing all the points and like it could, it might be good for a, a night in Vegas or whatever, where DraftKings and FanDuel have really um, leaned on rewarding their players with more bets. Like here's some more, here's another pot of money that you can bet, bet with. The, the rewards are more tangible if you have bricks and mortar. The other thing is, MGM has partnered with Marriott for Bonvoy. How amazing is it that now bet MGM players get to earn points and deploy points in the whole Marriott ecosystem as well? That's a game changer. What an amazing deal, I think, for Marriott and for um, MGM to, to have that partnership. Yeah, it's a great point. And it's one of those things that when we talk about here at 76 Capital about the overall sports and entertainment industry and how this is all coming together with media and everything else. I mean, this is so much more. It's It's been this amazing front door, I like to call it, um, for 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 everything else um across the the entertainment industry it's been it's been incredible i mean so it's the super bowl it's in las vegas this year last year the super bowl was in arizona we were both there it was the first time the the super bowl was in a state that had regulated sports betting which was pretty interesting to kind of see how that was how that all played out but that's kind of like training wheels before you know but here we are in the in the biggest city uh, when it comes to to gaming, this is a pretty big deal. I I think it's a huge deal, and just knowing Vegas like I do, it it makes total sense having the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. It just it's a city that is set up to handle a massive influx of people. They know how to move people around. I mean, you know, I know that there was griping about F one, which was a totally different sort of scenario, but they have you know if you think about um, CES and Con Ag, their big conference that's once every three years. Las Vegas knows how to ha handle a mad crush of people. Um, that's number one. Number two is that the NFL is is taking the look of gambling, the potential for a misbrand, very seriously. So. What they've said this year is even though in the regular season, uh, NFL players are allowed to gamble, they're allowed to gamble on other sports, they're not allowed to gamble on professional football, and they're not allowed to gamble at all on team property. But they've made a change to say that the Super Bowl teams cannot gamble at all in Las Vegas. They cannot sit down at a blackjack table. You're not going to see them in a poker tournament. They, they are not allowed to gamble full stop. And to that point, they're staying out in Henderson, oh, you know, far away from the strip. And I think the NFL is just being very conscientious about the way its brand and gambling um, mesh and, and, and where you, you know, what the pictures are, what people tweeting things are. We just saw this you know, scandal with Kayshawn Booty, the Patriots player who is accused of gambling as a student at LSU and, and using a fake um, identification to set up his account. FanDuel, according to the, the affidavit that the police filed. But I think it raises an interesting point about what does it look like Forget about the ins and outs about whether he was gambling as a professional player, because there's no indication that happened. But but what happens for the appearance of integrity when a story like that comes to light? It's it's about perception. And once you start to question the integrity of the game, the NFL knows it's in trouble. So it is fighting that tooth and nail. And that's why you're seeing, even though Vegas is the gambling capital of the nation and will remain so why you're seeing an effort to, to take place to keep the players in the spotlight 
off of the gaming floor. Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's it's such an important part of what we're what we do and what we invest in in and as you mentioned earlier, whether it's integrity, compliance, those are such important parts of the overall industry. But you know, from an entertainment perspective, you know, I've I've heard some rumors and seen some things floating around of there's there's going to be a potential prop bet out there of Travis Kelsey proposing to Taylor Swift on the field after the game. Have you seen any around that? Oh my god! Oh my god! If that happened, that would just be the end all be all of media moments. They're the, at the Super Bowl, a proposal between the world's biggest pop star. And I mean, I guess win or lose, he wins if he gets her to say yes. Right. <laughs> is, uh, I, I, I saw prop bets about whether she was going to make it to Vegas for the game. Like, like she's got a private plane. She can get, you know, I really, is this deserving of media coverage? Let's, let's game it out. How long is the flight? If you have your own plane and you can leave Japan and get to Las Vegas and maybe she can get off the plane, but she can't park her plane because every slot for private planes is already sold out. That's incredible. It, it's it's it really is incredible. We got we want to get back to a couple quick things before we wrap up here and really appreciate your time joining our 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show. And and Contessa, I mean, one of the things you were talking about earlier is this this over our, you know, what else happens in and around the sports betting and gambling and you know i know that you most recently were on with um las vegas sands ceo rob goldstein the adelson family buys the dallas mavericks um they have bought land all around the dallas area to potentially you know build a casino or and as well as a an arena potentially in the middle of it all. I mean, what are your thoughts about the future of how all this comes together? I mean, I just think it's clear that we're on a trajectory where betting, and I don't know that, I, I've had longtime Texans tell me, no way, no how is Texas ever going to move forward and legalize gambling. It's just not going to happen. I, I don't know. I kind of see it differently in in one way because it seems to me that it's one guy in Texas who has a lot of clout, but he's standing in the way of it. It that's not going to last forever. No, no one leader does. So, so the lieutenant governor might have a problem with this, but you know, can he be coaxed? What happens with state budgets? I mean, I think in California, the issue of the state budget might woo a different sort of inclination with the tribes and the voters and the legislators in California to think differently. But in the meantime, Texans and Californians and, and those who live in Utah are watching national advertising about betting. They're hearing it on the same sports that they're watching with everybody else. And it's gonna become commonplace. It's more acceptable. It's not the sin or the vice that, you know, revivalists used to preach about. That's number one. Number two, if people look at gambling as entertainment, then it makes sense to have the gambling in a place where entertainment also happens, whether it's concerts or, or sports or casinos that, you know, being out and, and about, we know like the draw of experiences now post pandemic that, that people are choosing to spend their discretionary cash on experiences rather than stuff. And that's, and that's really valuable. And I think what you're seeing from Las Vegas Sands is a bet that if they make the plans for the entire ecosystem around entertainment, they're going to win more support from the local community and from the state lawmakers as well. And by the way, though it's it's a little bit different, the bet may be similar in New York where they're taking over the Nassau Coliseum, which yep. is a sports venue, but they're saying we'll build, we get a casino license, we're prepared to spend $6 billion investing in new convention facilities in a complex where people want to go and spend time and and create jobs, create a new destination for the county. Um, and I think, I think that that investment of cash is valuable. And by the way, when you look at other companies, restaurants or 
you know, I, like I said, I cover insurance. When you look at the profit margins from casinos, casinos have the money to invest in that infrastructure. They have the money to help build schools, help improve the, the actual physical plant in the neighborhoods that they want to locate in. And that has value. Yeah, it, it certainly does. And and that's one of the things that I think one of the interesting you know, discussions around what is going on with ESPN, ESPN bet, Disney, the fact that they, you know, they understand entertainment. They know how to do this. Um, it'll be interesting to see in the future how Universal and Comcast and others, how are they ever going to play in this or how, you know, what, what are they, gonna, what will they potentially do? So before we get into that kind of stuff, and I'm sure if, if you have any thoughts on that, first, I'll, I'll let you go in on that. Uh, well, no, I was going to ask you, what do you think? Like, do you think that that Disney is going to spin off ESPN and let it go its own way? You know, I think it's going to be, I, look, I, I don't think anyone knows yet, but the thing is, is that the interesting thing about all of this is that it's not only are they going to spin it off, but who potentially will be coming in. And I think that's the other thing, which is really interesting, which will really, we're going to be talking about not only you covering, you know, the casino world, but I think it's going to be Google, Apple, Amazon, you know, Meta, right? You know, Netflix, right? All of a sudden, they that whole world is so relevant to sports, entertainment, and gaming. It's it's incredible. And and flush with cash. Correct. And also flush with cash. And to that point, when you see the streamers focusing on video gaming, I think that the net that 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 again the you can see if you if you look at the platforms of of gambling and gaming, you can see the overlap, right? You can see the areas where there are similarities and where especially kids growing up are going to automatically get it and trading for that matter. If Certainly. You, I, you know, I had um, a, a guest on my show last night. We were talking about the platform itself and and what it has to offer in order to engage young investors. And I do think that that overlap between trading, video gaming, and gambling is concerning. There's a concern that I have as the mom of young boys, but also I don't think we're going to dial that back. And so the question is, how do you use, I, we know that the the studies that are being done through gambling companies about addictive behavior, maybe the science behind that opens new doors new windows into how the brain works for other addiction for for you know video gambling addiction and for we know that there have been traders who've been addicted to day trading in ways that are damaging to their lives and their bottom line and who knows like down the road maybe drugs and alcohol and other things too i just think it's super exciting that we're having the confluence of content you know that there's this there's this way that we never would have thought about Apple getting into the gambling world, but you can see now how that might happen and why it might be an opportunity. And look, the one thing that I think a lot of people haven't talked about has been the Microsoft acquisition of Activision, right? Again, what was that all about? What are they, where, where's, where does that go and how does that really spread out across the overall Microsoft world? That ties into this. The whole thing about, as we'll both see, and it's, it's they're across the, the whole country now, but what um, the aristocrat NFL slot machines, right. right, that are in partnership with the NFL, the NFL PA. I know I've talked to people who have sat there for hours, have never played slot machines in their life, but have sat there and just played that slot machine because you can play that slot machine. You can play your team or any of the 32 NFL teams and they, and it's fun and you see videos and it's, 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 it's really, an, it's, it's all about entertainment. And not only that, but then what happened right now, the opportunities to bet on esports are either illegal or they've been very limited for a specific turn tournament. New Jersey will give a license for something like that. But if we consider esports sports, what are the opportunities for esports in terms of gambling and how might that change the engagement or the opportunities in the future um I, and again i you know i'm 
I'm looking, I'm being a futurist now rather than just what is. I do think we have to be careful about it. I do think we have to be careful. If you look at the, if the, you know, Florida saying they're going to introduce this bill to ban social media for anyone under 16, part of it is because new technology brings with it risks that we can't fully grasp when it's developing and, and unfolding. And we're seeing that with AI that, you know, where, where is this going to go? In what ways could this be beneficial? In what ways could this jeopardize human beings? And I think that's true of gambling, video gaming, esports, uh, you know, the, the streamers getting into these other areas. So I do think we need to build safeguards in. That's what I, I want as a mom. I do also think it provides really incredible opportunities for investors in this space for the what ifs. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think this is a great place to to wrap up um, with this one last question around the leaders, the leaders in the industry that you get to spend time with. They're the ones where who are going to think about the different guardrails, how far out they should go, how, you know, how much we should Think about what some of these things, but you've gotten to spend so much time with Amy Howe at FanDuel, Jason Robbins at DraftKings. The list goes on, right? I mean, of all, all the all the all the different uh, CEOs. When you when you spend time with them, what have, what have you learned from them, and what do you hear from them as to what what they see as the future and with how they're thinking about doing this the right way? I mean, one thing, they're very different. You know, like as as leaders and the way they think about the challenges of the industry, the opportunities of the industry, um, they're not all the same. And so it's interesting to see different leadership styles emerge. I also think the the leaders who are making their mark and will continue to do so, they think big. You know, they have they have big dreams that it may be hard for some of those around them to understand, but, you know, they're, they're taking their shot and some of them are all in and some of them are more careful players and they're, they are, they're betting on the future in ways that don't put all of the eggs in one basket. I'm really mixing metaphors here. It's like, like how many cliches can I work into one <laughs> answer? But I, I do think, you know, I do think it's interesting. And there's lots of different leaders. Jason Robbins, it's it's still clear that DraftKings is his baby. You know, like he, this this is his idea and his vision and his dream to fulfill. And he's still treating it like that. And Jim Murren, who was the very first casino executive that I met when I was assigned to cover this industry and was so generous with his time when I was just, I was just learning the ropes. But now he's in the Middle East, heading up the regulatory body for gambling in Muslim countries. Like, it's just remarkable to think about the possibilities of what happens. I'm going to say if right now, but I think it's probably when gambling expands around the Emirates, not just uh, relegated to wins development. Um, and I think the world is changing and that it takes smart, innovative leaders, you know, who can read the tea leaves. Amy, Amy Howe is doing an amazing job on integrity. And I, you know, she didn't, we haven't talked about this. I've just, I'm comparing it to conversations I've had with her in the past about her emphasis on especially young people. I, I know that this Kayshawn Booty thing has got to really bother the executives at FanDuel because my sense of talking with them, what they've told me is that it's important to them that underage kids are kept off of the platform. She's got three teenage boys. It's important to her. Um, and so it's interesting to see the ways that she's pushing forward and and throwing down the gauntlet in a lot of ways on integrity in sports and sports gambling. Well, 
thank you so much, you know, for, for joining our 76 Capital Sports Leadership Show. Contessa, it's been amazing. Look forward to seeing you out in Las Vegas, whether it's at Circa in this in their giant sports book there or out by this out the pool. Maybe you'll do some shots out by the pool. I don't know. That, yeah, I or, I think that that's exactly what I had in mind. It's almost like you should be my producer. Okay. <laughs> well, I, don't, I mean, I don't want I don't want to take Jessica's job. So, yeah, yeah, right. Let's not take her job. But Thanks, I, you know, when I was, yeah, thank you so much. See you. I'll see you out there. Absolutely. Take care.